Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel, my name is Ron, and today we're going to be going over some more overclocks and loadouts that I'd recommend for them. Like the rest in this series, these are just going to be brief overviews of just one particular overclock, how it works and how it enhances the weapon, and then a secondary that I paired with it that works really well in a general sense. So this time we're going to be taking a look at the Thunderhead Heavy Auto Cannon, and with our very first overclock we have composite drums for the auto cannon. This is a very simple overclock, just like most of the clean overclocks. This one gives you a slightly faster reload speed, and it also gets you 110 more ammo with the auto cannon. That's pretty good, even though I would consider this one to be one of the weakest overclocks for the auto cannon. The auto cannon has nothing but really good overclocks. The way I like to build it is like this, so I'm going to the extra ammo in tier 1, but this is not necessary at all. You could pick the other two. This is just so that I have tons of bullets. I have 880 rounds. It takes forever to run out of shots with this. Realistically, though, the larger magazine size or the increased damage is a better option than more ammo. You don't need more ammo. Increased rate of fire in tier 2. This is minimum rate of fire so that we can get up to our top rate of fire quicker. If you don't like that, you can pick the other two options too. They're also really good. Tier 3, I'm going with AoE damage so that we can hit crowds a little bit easier but all of them are good in tier 3. Extra AOE radius in tier 4, both these are really good too, and then damage reduction in tier 5. Again, all of them are really good though. And the auto cannon generally just has good mods and good overclocks so it's really difficult to suggest something that's not going to be good for the auto cannon. I would say play around with all of these with each of the overclocks and see what you end up liking. This is what I took just so that I could have some more crowd control with it. So this overclock doesn't really affect anything that the auto cannon doesn't already have going for it, which the auto cannon has a lot going for it to start out with. It is extremely ammo efficient. It's very hard to run out of bullets with the auto cannon just in general. It does really good damage towards crowds. It does decent damage towards larger enemies, and it does really well at close to medium range. Outside of that range, it is a little bit lacking. You can make up for that in certain ways though, but overall there's really not much if anything to complain about with the auto cannon it does its job extremely well and this overclock just helps with that since we have so many bullets for this particular one i decided to pair it with a secondary that doesn't have as many bullets i took elephant rounds with the revolver this is just so that we can use elephant rounds at very long range against high value targets things like tri jaws or detonators menaces or wardens or you could even use it against larger enemies up close like praetorians and oppressors for the second overclock we have neurotoxin payload this is an unstable overclock that reduces our overall damage both our area damage and our direct damage but it makes it so every shot has a 50% chance of inflicting neurotoxin onto enemies. It also gives us a larger explosion radius just in general. And you can splash this to multiple enemies. It is a really strong overclock. It deals a lot of damage over time. Um, it is absolutely fantastic for crowd control. It doesn't do so well against large enemies or robots. Robots are unaffected by neurotoxin, so it's less useful against them. But any sort of regular grunts, you're going to kill extremely quick with this. The way I have it built is like this. So going with extra ammo in tier 1, faster rate of fire in tier 2, extra damage in tier 3, extra AoE in tier 4, and then fear in tier 5. Fear plus the neurotoxin in tier 5 is ridiculously strong. It makes so every enemy that you're firing at is likely poisoned, slowed down, dealing, uh, taking damage over time highlighted for the team and it's running away so nobody really has to worry about it. For a secondary weapon with Neurotoxin Payload, I decided to take this with Triple Tech Chamber. Triple Tech Chamber is just a really strong overclock in general, lets you have good single target damage, lets you have some AoE as well. You can punch through walls with it like you can with the regular coil gun, so that's pretty nice. This used to be a stupidly strong combo when the coil gun was broken, at least with triple tech chambers. Actually, it was broken even without triple tech chambers, but where you could have 50% damage reduction. You can't do that anymore, at least the way that you could before, where you just had 50% damage reduction the entire time. Now you have to use it a little bit more sparingly. <laughs> but it still works really well for a long range option and I wanted to include it here on this list. Our third overclock for the auto cannon is combat mobility and combat mobility is a pretty fun and really good overclock. This makes it so when we're firing the auto cannon we have increased movement speed from what we usually do. Usually when firing the auto cannon you only have 50% movement speed, now you have 85% so you can move a pretty decent amount quicker. It also increases our minimum rate of fire, it increases our rate of fire scaling, and it decreases our spread so we're more accurate. Major downside though is that we get half the magazine size that we normally do. You could take the extra mag size in tier 1 and just make up for this weakness and then just basically have nothing but strengths. I still usually go with the extra ammo in tier 1 because I'm just addicted to how many bullets you get with this thing. The larger mag size though is really good. In tier 2 I go with the higher minimum rate of fire. This is so that we can get to our maximum rate of fire really fast. It actually only takes two bullets with this one to get to maximum rate of fire which makes it so if you want to go with damage in tier 5 or defense in tier 5 you hit it almost immediately. We're going with increased direct damage in tier 3, armor breaking in tier 4, and then shields in tier 5. Again this makes it so once you fire out two shots you're at that 50% damage reduction 
with your shields, which is really nice. If you wanted to go with damage though, you could do that too. And this overclock is surprisingly flexible. You can kind of use it with whatever you want. I decided to take it with Hellfire with the coil gun. You could really take this with whatever though. This is just for more crowd control, so we can fire this into crowds which the auto cannon already does, so again, you could switch it out for something else. This does give you some long range though, since the coil gun is really good at long range, and it's really good against robots when you can light them on fire. For our next overclock, we have Splintering Shells. Splintering Shells is a clean overclock that just gets us more area damage and a larger AoE. You can build this however you'd like, this is the way that I built it. So extra ammo, higher minimum rate of fire, more direct damage, more AoE, more damage when full rate of fire. This is more for direct damage than it is for AoE damage, but you could build it for AoE, or you could build it for rate of fire, or you could build it for a mix. All of them are really good on the auto cannon. For a secondary weapon, I decided to take this with the burst pistol, and I went with lead spray. This is just so that we do really high damage at close range. The auto cannon's already pretty good at close range, but it's more for crowd control. You do have to get up close with this particular loadout, and you could switch it out for anything else. For in the next loadout, we are going to be taking Carpet Bomber. Carpet Bomber gives us more area damage and more AoE, but it does reduce our direct damage. The way I like running Carpet Bomber is like this, which is honestly more of a meme build than a serious build. You could build this in different ways if you wanted it, but I would recommend you try out this one because it is super fun. This is what I call the Flat Cannon Gunner build. So we are going with increased mag size in tier 1. This is so that we can just keep firing the gun uh, pretty much non-stop. In tiers 2 and 3, we're going with the top rate of fire so we can fire it out even quicker. In tier 4, we're going with more AoE. And then in tier 5, we're going with more damage once we hit that top rate of fire. Pretty much, you're just going to fire this into crowds. And so long as crowds stay at somewhat of a distance, so long as they're not right up in your face, you can just keep firing this into them and you will kill small groups of enemies really, really fast or even large, dense groups of enemies really fast. This doesn't work incredibly well against large enemies like Praetorians, Oppressors, Dreadnoughts, but it does work really well against Grunt Swarms and against Mactera Swarms. For a secondary, I decided to take this with another fun secondary weapon. I took Six Shooter on the Revolver. Six Shooter just lets you have decent range and decent damage and decent damage per second because you can spam fire this at larger enemies. So if enemies do get a little bit too close, pull out the six shooter, just keep spamming this into enemies, then just switch back to the auto cannon so that you can just keep firing into groups. Super fun build, super fun uh, setup. Maybe not the strongest, you could build this to be stronger, but still, I just really love all the things that you can do with it. And then for our final overclock, we have Big Bertha. Big Bertha gives us a lot more direct damage as well as reduced spread, which is really nice for hitting long range targets. But we do lose a half of our magazine size, we lose 110 ammo, and we lose top rate of fire. That being said, I like to build it like this, so we're going with extra ammo in tier 1. This makes up for a loss of ammo. You could go with magazine size to make up for that too, that is an option. Or you could even go with damage if you just want to just hit things really hard. Going with increased maximum rate of fire in tier 2, I find this to be pretty useful just so that we can get back up to our normal rate of fire or a little bit higher than it. Increased direct damage in tier 3, armor breaking in tier 4, and then more max damage when we're at our max rate of fire in tier 5. This is just for hitting big things really hard. It does that really well. It kills crowds pretty well too because it still has decent AoE damage. Not as much as some of the other auto cannon overclocks, but still not bad for clearing up things like swarmers or grunts. And it hits grunts really hard if you hit them directly. And then to complement this, I decided to pair it with the burst pistol once again, taking compact mag and this I'm just going to be using at long range to pick off enemies or to wait for Born Ready to trigger so that it reloads my auto cannon. Born Ready is a really good perk that I would recommend you take if you are running the auto cannon with Gunner or if you're running the Hurricane with Gunner. It is super useful on those two weapons because the auto cannon's reload is about the same time that it would take for Born Ready to fully reload it, assuming that it's fully maxed out. Since both are five seconds, you can reload cancel the auto cannon to make it a little bit quicker, but for all intents and purposes, I find that Born Ready is good enough in most situations. So here's all the builds for the auto cannon with its overclocks. The auto cannon is insanely strong. With all of its overclocks, it's still really strong. It doesn't have any bad ones, and it's really difficult to build this incorrectly in any way. I don't really find a way, maybe less optimized than others, but Really, you can build the auto cannon however you like, and you're going to see really good results from it. Thanks, everybody, for watching this. I hope you guys enjoyed it, and I uh, hope this gave you some ideas for some auto cannon builds. So, I'll talk to you guys next time. Bye bye.